Wagenberg redirects here. For Trailer Park Wagenberg, see Trailer Park. For the museum in Vienna, see Wagenberg. A lager, also known as a wagon fort, is a mobile fortification made of wagons arranged into a rectangle, a circle or other shape and possibly joined with each other, an improvised military camp. Aminus Marcellinus, a Roman army officer and historian of the 4th century, describes a Roman army approaching ad Carriginum as they approach a Gothic camp. Historians interpret this as a wagon fort. Notable historical examples include his sites, which called it Vos over Hradba, known under the German word Wagenberg, Tabers in the armies of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Cossacks, the Lager of the settlers in South Africa. Similar ad hoc defense formations were used in the United States, and were sometimes called corrals. These were traditionally used by 19th-century American settlers traveling to the West in convoys of Conestoga wagons. When faced with attack, such as by hostile Native American tribes, the travelers would rapidly form a circle out of their wagons bringing the draft animals and women and children to the center of the circle. The armed men would then man the perimeter, the circled wagons serving to break up the enemy charge, to create a certain amount of concealment from observation and shelter from enemy firearms fire. They would also slow down and separate any warriors who attempted to get past the wagons into the circle, making them easier to dispatch. Although they never formed the perfect barricade as a true wall would, this tactic was popularly known as circling up the wagons, and survives into the modern day as a idiom describing a person or group preparing to defend themselves from attack or criticism. From Second World War armored warfare, a lagar is a defensive formation of tanks formed by backing all of the vehicles into a circle with their strong frontal armor and main guns facing outward. More vulnerable support and reconnaissance vehicles and personnel would be stationed in the center of the circle, where they would be protected by the tank's armor. This formation was mostly used for quick resupply or refueling, or for bivouacking at night, and was only to protect against sudden ambush, never as an active combat tactic. It was particularly popular with German forces on the Eastern Front before the Soviets managed to get effective attack aircraft into service, and was meant to protect against sudden armored or infantry attack from any direction, a real possibility in the highly mobile warfare on the Russian steppes. It also served to protect the crews maintaining, refueling or resupplying the vehicles by putting the armored tanks between them and enemy infantry. Snipers or mortar, artillery fire landing outside the lager. While bivouacking, it was common for crewmen to dig foxholes underneath their tanks, to provide an additional measure of protection in case of sudden artillery barrage. Most tanks provided a belly escape hatch, making it easy to re-enter the vehicle. Parking the tanks in a circle also meant that no matter what direction the enemy attacked from, it would face thick frontal armor and at least several main guns pointing in the direction. This was important, as a tank had much thinner armor and very little visibility to the rear. An ideal anti-tank ambush involved maneuvering into position behind an unaware enemy and dispatching him with a shot in the rear of the hull. Tanks were also vulnerable to infantry approaching the tank unseen from the rear, and dispatching it with a satchel charge, Molotov cocktail, or similar weapon. While tank crew were originally taught to always seek a solid position that they could reverse up to to protect their rear armor if they planned to stop for more than a few minutes, they found that it worked even better to back up to several other tanks to provide mutual protection and 360-degree defense. Although this tactic worked well on the Eastern Front, especially in the early days, it proved highly dangerous in the presence of aircraft, which were extremely lethal to concentrated formations of armor. The only defense against a rocket-firing IL-2 or bomb-laden P-47 was to keep dispersed as a possible, to minimize losses and to make a smaller target. 
Thus, its popularity dwindled on the Eastern Front, and it never gained the same popularity on the Western Front, where the German forces operated under almost constant Allied air superiority, and aircraft proved to be the greatest threat to their armoured divisions. However, it continued in use as a protective formation during bivouac under the cover of darkness, since the crew couldn't easily sleep inside a cramped tank hull, and the unarmored elements of an armored division required some form of protection against infiltrating enemy units. The Lager formation was also employed by the Allies, who had little to fear from the Luftwaffe after the first half of the war. History one of the earliest examples of using conjoined wagons as fortification is described in the Chinese historical record Book of Han. During the 119 BC Battle of Mobei of the han New War, the famous Han general Wei Qing used armored wagons known as Wu Gang Wagon in ring formations to neutralize the Zhongnu's cavalry charges, before launching a counter-offensive which overran the nomads. In the 13th century the armies of Kiev and Rus used the Tabers in the Battle of Kalka to defend themselves from Mongol forces, Czechs and Hussites in the 15th century. During the Hussite Wars, the Hussites developed tactics of using the Tabers, called Vos over Hradba in Czech or Wagenberg by the Germans, as mobile fortifications. When the Hussite army faced a numerically superior opponent, the Bohemians usually formed a square of the armed wagons, joined them with iron chains, and defended the resulting fortification against charges of the enemy. Such a camp was easy to establish and practically invulnerable to enemy cavalry. The etymology of the word Tabor may come from the Hussite fortress and modern-day Czech city of Tabor which itself is a name derived from biblical Jezreel Mountain Tavor. The crew of each wagon consisted of 18 to 21 soldiers, 4 to 8 crossbowmen, 2 handgunners, 6 to 8 soldiers equipped with pikes or flails, 2 shield carriers and 2 drivers. The wagons would normally form a square, and inside the square would usually be the cavalry. There were two principal stages of the battle using the wagon fort, defensive and counter-attack. The defensive part would be a pounding of the enemy with artillery. The Hussite artillery was a primitive form of a howitzer, called in Czech a ice, from which the English word howitzer comes. Also, they called their guns the Czech word pistola, meaning that they were shaped like a pipe or a fife, from which the English word pistol is possibly derived. When the enemy would come close to the wagon fort, crossbowmen and handgunners would come from inside the wagons and inflict more casualties on the enemy at close range. There would even be stones stored in a pouch inside the wagons for throwing whenever the soldiers were out of ammunition. After this huge barrage, the enemy would be demoralized. The armies of the anti-Hussite crusaders were usually heavily armored knights, and Hussite tactics were to disable the knights' horses so that the dismounted knights would be easier targets for the ranged men. Once the commander saw it fit, the second stage of battle would begin. Men with swords, flails, and pole arms would come out and attack the weary enemy. Together with the infantry, the cavalry in the square would come out and attack. At this point, the enemy would be eliminated, or very close to it. Another use of this tactic would be very similar to the infantry squares used by Wellington at the Battle of Waterloo and the South African Lager. The wagon forts would form into squares that would support each other. Whenever an enemy charged between two forts, marksmen from both of them would easily exploit the advantage and kill many of the enemy. The wagon fort was later used by the crusading anti-Hussite armies at the Battle of Takov. However, the anti-Hussite German forces, being inexperienced to this type of strategy, were defeated. The Hussite wagon fort would meet its demise at the Battle of Lipany, where the Utraquist faction of Hussites defeated the Taborite faction by getting the Taborites inside a wagon fort on a hill to charge at and by it, first attacking then retreating. The Utraquists would reunite with the Catholic Church afterwards. Thus ended the wagon fort effect on Czech history.
The first victory against the wagon force of the Battle of Takov showed that the best ways to defeat it were to either prevent it from being erected, in the first place, or to get the men inside of it to charge out of it by means of a faint retreat. Thus, the fortification would lose its prime advantage. The wagon fort's effect on Czech history was lost, but the Czechs would continue to use the wagon forts in later conflicts. After the Hussite Wars, foreign powers such as the Hungarians and Poles who had confronted the destructive forces of Hussites, hired thousands of Czech mercenaries. At the Battle of Varna in 1444, it is said that 600 Bohemian handgunners defended a wagon fortification. The Germans would also use wagons for fortification. They would use much cheaper materials than the Hussites, and they would have different wagons for the infantry and the artillery. The Russians also used a type of movable fortress, called a Goulier Gorod in the 16th century. Variations Lager a lager, lager, liga or l-a-e-r, Dutch pronunciation, lara or lia. The word is South African in origin, and originally referred to a formation used by travelers whereby they would draw wagons into a circle and place cattle and horses on the inside to protect them from raiders or nocturnal animals. Lager were extensively used by the Vortrekkers of the Great Trek during the 1830s. In 19th century America, the same approach was used by pioneers who would circle the wagons in case of attack. Tabor a Tabor is a convoy or a camp formed by horse-drawn wagons. For example, nomadic gypsies used to wander and camp in Tabor formations. Tabor supported the armies in Europe between the 13th and 20th centuries. Tabers usually followed the armies and carried all the necessary supplies and rear units, such as field kitchens, armorers or shoemakers. The tactics were later copied by various armies of Central Europe, including the army of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In the 16th and 17th centuries, these tactics were also mastered by the Cossacks who used their tabers for the protection of marching troops as well. Circle the wagons. In English, too, circle the wagons is an idiom to prepare to defend against an attack or criticism. 